responsive portfolio website with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Finally, after a long time, I gave up my laziness for this. I made this landing page years ago. So far, it looks good to me because I made a lot of changes to make it look more professional rather than a noob's work. So if I miss anything, do let me know. I should probably add a little space between text and image here. By the way, as you might have guessed, this won't be your typical portfolio YouTube video where you enjoy music and have no issues in the code at all. I am gonna annoy you with voiceover. One might even get frustrated over class or ID names. You have no idea how many stupid names I have changed before making this demo. So I have decided to get my frustration of reworking through this project. Be known to the entire world so you can learn from my mistakes. Ooh, look sexy. I just noticed something that I missed. You are not supposed to leave a word, image or anything. Alone in isolation, we will take care of this in code. It doesn't look professional. I searched chat GPT and it gave me the term orphan for this kind of thing and widow for typography. I wonder who came up with these terms. We won't let anyone be widowed or orphaned in this website. Anyways, one more thing to keep in mind is to have color consistency in the website. Just another act professional flex. Don't add more than three colors and prefer to have variation of the same color. Like I have three different shades of blue. I mean, that's my personal consistency method. Same goes for typography. Consistency is key, bro. I am quite proud of this testimonial section. I use Swapurge, but this was the first time. I learned how to use JavaScript libraries and integrate it with my code. Good times. Email address and website link should be lowercase, not capitalized. The idea for this contact form is to send error message if any input field is empty and send the success message if all the fields are filled. Also to refresh the whole form without refreshing the entire page. Looks dope to me. Here comes the footer. It's very simple because I remember how I got to tired to do more. Still good enough to show you guys right. Here comes my trauma. You must have seen this navigation sidebar in my previous responsive restaurant landing page website. It was cool enough that I decided to add it in this website, but I realized that my dumbass named everything so complicated that it took me an entire day integrating my navigation bar in this website. So please be careful naming everything. So even if you open your code 84 years later, you can understand what each class or ID name means. Let's see how this landing page website looks like in small screen or in tablet screen size. I am proud of my old self for this header, homepage. I mean, I got help from YouTube, but STLL integrating it in my code was a big deal back then. This skill section was tough to make. We will talk about this later, when we will make it. SVG can be hard to tackle sometimes. By the way, did you guys notice the favicon here? We will add that today. I will provide the link in the description for favicon generator. You can also learn how to add a simple favicon from the link at the top. Now I am tired of talking, but this demo keeps going. Well, I guess you guys should deal with it. I just realized I forgot to add my channel intro. I don't even remember where it is. While you guys get bored with my demo, I will look for my channel intro. I work day and night making it. I found it. Considering how pretty this website is supposed to look like, let's see the initial setup of our website. We have too many images in this image folder for each section. Probably more images than use here, but I will clean it up. This is our CSS file. I made this into a template long time ago. Probably why it even has an index a documentation of each website template. Boring but necessary cause it helps you remember what we did in the past. Clean code is necessary so please keep commenting what you are doing. Well we just link CSS file that's all. We have text file and JavaScript file. 
JavaScript file will obviously have JavaScript code for animation and such. Let's link this JavaScript file. Is it only me or if something is not working your first blame is always JavaScript? Not that CSS is innocent all the time. This text file that we have is supposed to simply save me from remembering color codes, links, and icons. What a mess. But don't worry, we don't need to link this mess to our HTML file. Obviously, let's start adding title and links in our HTML file though. I will deal with favicons at the end of the video and add the favicon link in the description. Back to adding links for swap purges, font awesome, box icons, and everything in between. I like box icons. I really do but I feel like it doesn't have enough icons, like Font Awesome do. By the way, there are two kinds of icons, filled and outlined. Make sure you are consistent in their utilization. You know to look professional and stuff. We will use Swift Purge for testimonial carousel. You need to add both JavaScript and CSS link for it to work. Let's see any other link left. I hope not. Now gotta make sure everything is set for HTML initial setup, so I can move on to CSS, where we will be setting up our default resets. Perks of having text file, I get to copy paste Google font link, not to be that guy but if you want to learn how to get Google fonts, check out the link in the description. Root is where you create CSS variables that can be used throughout CSS file, just like JavaScript variables. You can have your default scroll bar or, don't be lazy, make your own. Fun fact, this is going to be really boring, but having CSS resets are very necessary. They don't just help you have consistency throughout the website, but also saves you a lot of time. There are many CSS resets you can find online. Even this I picked from somewhere. Unfortunately, I forgot from where. The point is I typed this once but now I get to copy paste it in all, which saves me a lot of time. Setting up icons, lists, texts and buttons. I was making a template so there are many things in here, written for the sake of professionalism. Some may not even be necessary, but written for taking care of all possible scenarios. That's why I use these basic settings in all my projects. It's eligible for most website designing, like this example where there can be many ordered or unordered list. But if I add the role of list to anything, list style will be none. We will use this role in our header. Let's deal with our HTML and body tags. By the way, today we will just set up our HTML and CSS base. Next time we work on our header and homepage. Let's see if this is working so far. Aha! What a nice blue color. Although I am bored of seeing this color at this point, you know the trauma of dealing with 84 years old code. If you are wondering why I am using Edge Browser, well this is the only one I know that gives me the chance to display code, along with web page, and helps me test responsiveness on all screen sizes. And for some reason I love to have my web page, displaying side by side with my code. I have no idea how to make cool coding videos like Kevin and others, so unfortunately, you will be seeing this boring kind of coding video. Please don't sleep during this video. Probably why I keep talking. Well the Jeff AI guy keeps talking. This is not my real voice, obviously. As much as this extension looks annoying it's important. The CSS auto prefix versus code extension. It helps me make my web page compatible for all web browsers for automatically writing code for Firefox, Safari, Edge. It's dope. You guys should try it. This code is basically dealing with people that hate transitions and animations and just want to stick to the point. No fashion sense.
Finally, we are dealing with anchor tags, input, text area buttons and stuff. And obviously icons are important too. I will suggest style them how you love them to look. This reminds me I was working on some icons on the bottom like in Instagram. Some animation of displaying more icons on hover. We'll show you guys soon. So these reusable classes are those that we will use a lot. Like if you have an addiction too. Display flex. Justify content sender. Align item sender. Just put them in one class and add said class throughout HTML code. Sometimes saving stuff dot dot. But be careful with your addictions. You might mess up your code. This pretty is pretty much only used in navigation, sidebar, but I prefer to keep in here with reusable classes because I like using it in multiple places. It's pretty after all, but in this website, it's only going to be used once. So these shape thingies are the squares that we're moving along with our cursor. It's just for fashion. We will use them with each section we code. It will only display on large screen size not small, because it looked to stuff for small screen. I prefer to code mobile screen first so I displayed these shapes to none, for now. By the way, I use this site to clip my shapes. Let me check if I write these clipping correctly. Can't make fun of my own self in front of everyone. Guess I added to many commas. By the way I may keep the opacity low so it doesn't bother the rest of the content. Gotta make sure important stuff is more visible than fashion stuff. Add as many as you want, I prefer for squares. Just make sure to change their top and properties so they don't overlap. Now we deal with typography. I am going to use only two fonts, but different font sizes. Goal is consistency. We are creating hierarchy with these. So more important stuff like headings will have more bigger font class, and simple text smaller font class. These are typography I use in most websites, but there is a chance I may not prefer to use one. We will be deciding which class to use as we go through the code.
I promise buttons are final thing we need to deal with in CSS. Make two to three buttons at most. First button for main purpose, second for second main purpose. Meaning follow hierarchical rules for buttons as well. I hope you guys aren't sleepy already. Jeff is tired, I guess he has nothing to say anymore. But don't go away you all. I am not that rich I need subs. I won't ask you to buy me coffee but I will ask you to subscribe to my channel, so I can buy myself one. Wait I just realized favicons are left, where did that video go? Oh H here it is. Inside images I have a favicon folder, usually one is enough, but we gotta cater to all the browsers, so for now let me just add some links since I already have my favicons. And now I will show you how I got these favicons. That's too small. Let me enlarge it. Nope, no zooming. Ah, there it is our website's favicon. I will add the link but here is the favicon generator, the purple one. Obviously, go to select favicon image and add your image that you want to work with. But since I already have one, I will show you how it works with the demo image. Check out all these favicons it created for different browsers. Let's generate our favicons. It's going to load the HTML code that we just put in HTML file so just copy paste it. In the href is where you give the path to your favicons. So once you download and extract the favicon package in your website folder, add the correct path to the href. Let's see if everything is working one last time. Since I'm tired of staring at my code, gotta appreciate my work from time to time by staring at it, even if it is blank. If you are still here after dealing with my boring dead humor for 20 minutes straight then...